Welcome to another tutorial of Cold Fusion. In this tutorial we are going to look at the CF query tag. And this means that we will have to create a database, a table. We have to connect Cold Fusion to the database. Then we have to play around with some SQL or SQL language. And then we build a Cold Fusion page with that. The idea today is also to create a real business example of what we could create with Cold Fusion. Personally, I love working with databases. I generally just think, with every project, I think databases. I think, how does this website gonna work? How is this website gonna work with just a bunch of tables? How am I gonna link all the tables? How am I going to make it work? So, for me, actually everything in life, I would nearly say, is, is databases and tables. That is also the fun for me in Cold Fusion, just connecting up stuff with Cold, with Cold Fusion and databases and tables and creating fun interactive websites. Naturally I make always these nice presentations for you. Let's start! Cold Fusion tutorial, mm, tutorial number 4, databases, tables and queries. Databases and queries. A database is a place where a lot of data can be stored in so-called tables. You could see a table, or a database in this case, like a contact book or one of those boxes with lots of contact cards in them. I, I, I now added a an, an picture here of uh, one of those rolodexes as they are called. It was essentially just an alphabetical uh, like an order in a way, a map, but open. And uh, under every letter there would, would be every contact person beginning with that last name or first name or business name letter. Under the S you would find Smilebringer. Each contact card or page contains the first name, the last name, the telephone number, an address of a contact or, or a business. There are many cards or pages inside the contacts book. You could actually actually have a, a contact book as well, of course. This is the more the business way of easy going through all the numbers if you had to fi find one to call a contact. I, ha I have everything on my, f on my phone, so... <laughs> so if my phone goes to, uh, to bits, then I have a problem, I guess. There are many pa cards or pages inside the contact book. In other words, there are many contacts in one book. Equally, inside a table there is a room for multiple rows of information. So, a table is to be compared with the whole Rolodex in a way. It could be like a table named contacts or business contacts. And then you would have for every row uh, the contact person's name, the phone number of the contact person, the phone number of the business, email address, a business name of course, uh, maybe the business website, that you can also store in a table. And you can have multiple data, uh, no, multiple tables within a database as well. But we don't have to go that far. <laughs> Maybe we'll just keep it to one one table in one database today. Uh, we can make this as complicated or as easy as it can get. But let's just dive into more examples to get a better understanding. Exactly. So uh, we will work with a proper example, both a different example here in this uh, pre presentation as well as the actual thing we're going to work with in Cold Vision. A database connection with Cold Fusion. So a database stores all the different tables that you could have for an application. This database needs to be connected with Cold Fusion at the administrator level before you can access the database and its tables at the code level. And this is done in the Lucy or Cold Fusion administrator website. And after that connection has been made, we can dive into the code and create queries, SQL, SQL to access the data and that will be then put into the CF query and the CF query uh, has then a variable name which can be used to display the data in outputs. So let's try and create something ourselves. Let's create a database. The, I'm already connected to my server. Here you see MariaDB, this is my database server for MySQL. It's a, it's, a, it's a different version of my MySQL, but it works just as MySQL. And here we're going to create a database. Create database. 
uh, customer relation. Customer relationships. Query OK, one row affected. So I created a new database called customer relationships. Use customer relationships. So now you see that we have um, MariaDB and the customer relationships database selected. Now we are going to create a table. And I want to uh, use an auto increment on the ID field so that we can uh, have always unique numbers to identify the database with or the records with sorry so that we have a unique ID to refer to in the uh, records in the table create table customers and an opening thingy and then well, what kind of fields should we use here uh, ID that would be good then we can at least uh, identify the system with and that is an integer and then we have to do some expe extra special code here because this is going to be the primary field and it's also going to be the uh, auto increment field so not null not allowed to be zero or, or nothing rather empty but not, not null that means not allowed to be empty um, auto increment now it will automatically increment one two three four five every time we create a new record in the table um so this is a, a customer's table so we will have a business name business name of a voucher of uh, let's say 200 characters and we will have a a uh, address Voucher of 30. We will have a postal code. Voucher 6. We will have a city. Voucher of 20. We will have a phone number. Voucher of, oh, voucher of um, 15. We will have a contact person name. Contact person name, yeah, whatever. Um, a far jar of 50. We will, because I can use the first name and last name in one field in a way. A um, email address. Far jar of 60. Isn't big enough for email address? Uh, probably. We will have a website for char of 100. And what else? We could have for the Twitter handle, the Instagram handle, and so on as well, in basically here in stored. Um, we're just gonna go for the uh, created at daytime updated at daytime and deleted at daytime because I just like to have that and then according to this thing to make it a primary key the ID will also have primary key definition here so then we have to do comma and primary key and then ID and then we close it with uh, that one, be careful there, <laughs> because you have there the ID already in those thingies, but we have to do that as well with this thing. And then dot comma to create a table, enter. And that says query OK, no, zero rows affected, but actually it has done something, because if I do now show, show tables, it will show we have customers. So there is a table now called customers. So now we can insert data in this table because right now if you do select star from customers there's nothing. Let, let's just insert one of these uh, 
customers m manually on the uh, SQL interface on the command line. You can do all of this stuff, all these operations also from a Cold Fusion page, which we'll also show today. That is, that is of course very ideal because that is how most of the websites also work. That is how everything online that is interactive, where you send some data, it will be stored into some place. Most cases. Okay, some, sometimes it gets sent in an email, but most cases it gets stored in a database or table. So, insert into customers. And the column name, the ID we don't have to think about because that one is we have actually configured as auto increment, so it will automatically generate an, an first record number one, second record number two. So we go for business name, business oh, name, and then we close that thing, and then we type values, and then we open it again. And the first name is the business name. We have to use here these these. Um, hyphens to show that there's a string and if it's a number you don't use a hyphen uh, zero six zero seven is today <coughs> and the time is 14 17 00. and that should be it and i hope i did it right now <laughs> i'm never sure with, with date, date time fields if i have to fill it out with a uh, hyphen or not. Query OK, one row affected. Woo! We did it right. <laughs> Woo -hoo! So now I can do um, select star from customers. So now you can see ID, business name, address, postal code, city, phone number, contact, person name, email address, website, created and updated as and deleted as. Worked. So now we can go to Cold Fusion. Finally. <laughs> no, I, I forgot one thing. Before we dive into the code and uh, the Lucy administrator, we also need a username and a password that has access to the database. Now I am using the, the root access to everything. <coughs> don't, don't say this. <laughs> this is a terrible option. Uh, for local, local it's okay, I guess. Um, for development areas, also okay. For something that is online, you shouldn't be using this, and definitely not on a production server. So I have, um, I've, I have, I had to look it up because this is something I, I generally don't use, and hence I have found it here online. It says create user and a new user, create user, and then we can use uh, uh, CF tutorial. Yeah. Um, at localhost. This is just to define that this user is only for, uh, accessible on localhost. Identified by and then the password. Now it has created the user with a password. And then I have to grant privileges like rights to this user so they can actually do something, something with this table in the database. Grant, and then we can type the type of per permissions that we want to access. We don't want to give everything, so we give. So I would use not more than insert and select and update. So insert, select, and update. That are the most important ones. Delete could be used if you want to actually delete physically delete a record from a database. As I use deleted at as a uh, date time format uh, for defining whether something should be displayed or not, I don't like to do add that one right either. And I have to type on, oh, on uh, database name, customer relationships, and then all the tables dot star. You could use it per table name, but I'm going to do dot star, and then two. And on the username, which is CF Tutorial at localhost. Where you go? Okay, zero rows affected. I think it is done properly. Welcome to the Lucy Web Administrator. This is the uh, local version that you would see for your application and not the one that is on the server, which you normally shouldn't be having access to. But we are going down to services and then to data source. As you can see here are some other systems from Ovi Divide. We are going to create a new data source here. So let's type here a name. 
uh, CRM and the type, type is MySQL. Then I cl click on create and get this page. This is CRM, is my, this is the name that we want to use to refer to in uh, Cold Fusion. The host is localhost. This is because our database server is on the same place as the Cold Fusion server. The actual database is not called CRM, so we have to change that here because it actually defaults to that from the uh, data source name. So the database name is Customer Relationships. The port stays the same. Username. The username is the user that we just made. And then the rest we can leave. It's this one, Verify Connection, which is automatically selected. And then we click Create and it should work. I don't want to save that, thank you. And here you see local data source, CRMS, MySQL, and it checked OK. So it works. So let's go into the code. Uh, lesson 4. Here's lesson 4. I already have it open here. I made already the content wrapper stuff for it. Um, yeah, here we can actually just use CF query now. So we type CF query. And then we have the data source. The data source name is CRMS. And the um, name attribute for um, query customers. And as you see, it comes automatically with a slash CF query. Within this, we can now type the how to select. We're going to pick up the customers that we have. So we're going to have all the customers over here. And then we can code SQL again. Select star from customers. And that's it. And now for displaying that. And this is actually not so much work as you can see. The most work goes into creating the actual database. And now we can do CF output. Query is query customers and then we can uh, show the stuff like you can now just create a list of uh, query customers dot column list column row and record count these are actually uh, functions uh, in cold fusion for the current query you can actually see the column list this can actually show you all the columns query oh, Query customers dot record count, which is the amount of records in the database, and query customers dot current row. So um, columns. Of course, this will be only one if there's only one re uh, record in the database. But if there would be multiple, we would have to go for every record through through it, and it would. Uh, <laughs> would then three time, uh, three times. If there would be three records, it would be three times this information, and the current row would be updating with every row number of year on. So this actually actually has a function. This one, record count is sort of like well, total number of records. It's useful if you want to do certain man manipulations or display different information. Columns is not as useful in this case but it could be useful for dynamic forms or something so columns there are indeed the column names record count is one and therefore the current row is one if there will be three re records it would go for, f for three times this information <laughs> but it would update the current row three times we can also just actually show the, what is in there right so let's, so let's do that customers and just put it in, in the header tag so we can show the actual customers and then we just do query customers dot business name <coughs> business name customers and then you say business name small brain so now we can make a, a nice contact form for this which which uh, like a, a display of all of the information of the table um, this comes down to basically HTML and a little bit of cold vision so we could make like business name 
and then um, you can put this in paragraphs, can we? Yeah. Paragraph um, website query customers dot website and oh hello paragraph email query customers dot email address you have to remember all the names of the columns uh, phone number phone number query customers dot phone number and that should work and you see business name small bringing incorporated website small bringing in games dot com email small bring in gmail dot com Phone number 01234567891. Well, of course, you can make this look very nice, put it in a table or something. So now you see, like, the, the company name is Smallberry Inc. and it has a contact person of Steven and has a phone number and an email address. It's just a way to display this information, right? You can make it any way possible. In whatever design you, you wish for and well like i said we can go much further into this we can go and insert records and update records and show you how it interactive is going to work and this is why i said that the crm system is actually starting in in lesson five because next lesson we can actually go into that uh, thank you for watching today's tutorial on cf query and sql I hope to see you again next time. Be sure to subscribe and click on the bell notification to keep yourself up to date when a new video gets launched. Also, be sure to comment me in the comment section. I would love to read your comments. I would love to get feedback on what I've done. And please ask questions and then I can answer them for you. Also, be sure to like and we will see you next time.